Today starts out a lot like any other Thursday in which I'm giving Instagram updates about the WSOP, non-WSOP events I'm currently firing in on GG Poker. How do they do it? And the day doesn't begin particularly great for us. My kings get cracked here in the 125 event. Now we switch over to WSOP event number 60. It's a $525 six-handed bounty tournament. I open with ace-10 offsuit, get jammed on by two short stacks. Collecting bounties is very important in this type of structure, so I called. The flop is not great. I'm up against a set, and ace-9 also makes a pair. I'm drawing dead to some backdoor draws. The turn gives us a little hope. The river gets us there. We knock out two players, collecting some cash and increasing our chip stack. That'd be about the end of our good fortune in the WSOP event, though. We get it in here with ace-king suited versus ace-jack suited. We're drawing slim on the turn. Then we lose our first bullet. Four diamonds. Wow. And we're out. I'm not giving up that easily. I re-enter. Get short, then I'm all in with ace-10 offsuit again versus pocket seven's preflop. We lose this one and are stuck about a thousand shortly into the day. The last hope is the 125 event where my kings got cracked earlier. By the way, I promise I'll have full screen hands soon. We're actually deep in this tournament. Only 50 players remain out of the original 941. We call a shove with ace-queen. Unfortunately, we're against ace-king. We don't win this hand, but we have the opponent covered, so we're not out, we're just short. We three bet jam soon after with pocket fours from the small blind, get called by ace king offsuit. We're actually a 54% favorite, but two overs wins in this situation 99% of the time when you don't flop a set. These are just well known poker facts. We don't flop a set in this instance. It may seem like we have a reasonable chance of winning, but surely the poker gods are messing with us and will almost certainly put an ace king or 10 out by the river. The turn is safe, still, very unlikely we win this despite it saying that we're a 77% favorite. Don't be fooled, those numbers are only there to cause maximum pain when the river card slowly peels, puts a dagger into our- Yes! Doubled up. Big double up. Wow. Okay, never mind. We somehow fade all the outs our opponent had. We definitely won't be able to win again in a similar situation against the same opponent, can we? We open with pocket fours, got jammed on by the big blind who has a six offsuit with a short stack. We called. Let's run it. Okay. Okay, no ace or six. No ace or six. Yes! All right, Andrew. All right, Bradley. Let's go. A lot now. I've got a top 10 chip stack. The player across from me, Ad Astra, is fifth in chips. Him and I are about to battle big time. I raised preflop with pocket tens from the cutoff. Ad Astra defended. We flopped top set. After it's checked to me, I see bet for about one third pot, then something amazing happens. Wow, I just got raised. Come on, get it in, Ad Astra. I'll be chip leader if I win this. Or if it goes all in. All in, all in. Wow, huge pot, 800. He has a, he has a straight draw. Don't hit it, please don't hit it. Yes! Woo! Vote it up. 800,000. Number one in chips, Ooh. wow. There are only 35 remaining players. I went from being on life support to being chip leader very quickly. First prize is almost $18,000. Does it have my name on it? I don't know. But I'm gonna find out, and so are you. With 19 left, I win with Jiggities. The next hand I open with ace six suited under the gun. I get that through. The following hand I have ace five offsuit. Cutoff raises to five big blinds with nearly all of his stack. Folds to me, I'm either going all in or I'm gonna fold. It's a close decision, I certainly don't have to call here. I have a large stack though and I could be up against all kinds of worse hands like king, queen, jack, 10, or nine high hands, potentially something even worse. Folding seems too weak, we jam, and it turns out we are against nine high. We're just up against two nine highs. Come on, ace. Nope. Hearts? No. Damn it. Three, three, three. That would be sick. Well, one for the knockout, didn't get it. It's only for like, I don't know how many big blinds, not that many. 18 left. Seventh in chips now. Once I come back from the break, I pick up an ace jack offsuit on the button. I'm in raise, small blind who has a massive stack, lets his cards go. Our old pal, Ad Astra, seems to have a big decision to make in the big blind. Kind of hoping for a jam. 
It's got less than 10 big blinds. Are we reconnecting? Take your time. Currently, players are guaranteed $521, but there's a page up to 718 once one more person gets knocked out. So I suspect this player may have purposefully disconnected to get extra time before potentially jamming on me in order to make the pay jump in case he loses. Eventually, he comes back and indeed goes all in. I call with intention of sending him back to his home. We've got the best hand going into Come on, ace one time. No king or queen. Yes, draw him dead, all right. We're on pace to make the final table. We have to constantly increase our stack though. We want $18,000, not 718. The very next hand, we're dealt ace king suited in the cutoff. I'm in raise. Looks like we may take it down uncontested. The big blind has other ideas. Okay, let's see if we can knock out two in a row. Come on, ace or king? Club, club, club. Ace, king, club. Yes! Woo! Two knockouts in a row. And that's gonna put us at uh, close to the, close to second or something. So, down to the final two tables. We're in third, third in chips. You can see the payout structure here. 161 total players made the money. We're close to the end of the tournament and have made quite a few pay jumps, but it'd be nice to make several more. I don't make it this far very often in large field tournaments. I need to make the most of this opportunity. With two tables left to pick up Ace King suited again. Under the gun plus one opens at 40,000. The hijacker started the hand with 17 big blinds, rips it in. This is incredibly strong to three bet jam over an early position raise. Folding to preserve a large stack with big pay increases coming doesn't seem entirely unreasonable. But I'm playing to win. All right, we're getting it in here. Love it. Ace King clubs. Kings, damn it, that's not what we wanted to see. And of course, we get punished for playing to win. Ace, club, ace, ace, damn it, this is bad. This is bad. Yes, woo! Miraculously, we spike a three outer on the river to steal the win from our opponent. For a long stretch, I wasn't running well in tournaments leading up to this one. Could this be my day? We get to the lobby and see that we're back in first place, and that's really the best place to be. Next level, we're down to 12 players. We see four opponents all in on the final table bubble. I've never seen anything like this. I look down at seven deuce offsuit in the big blind. Ordinarily, it's a snap fold. Here, I'm getting a great price though. I have a massive stack. Now, if I win, I can bust four players to make some pay jumps, get us down to eight people left. With those things in mind, I still fold because I'm not a crazy person. This could get us to the final table here. There are four all ins aces, kings, queens, ace, jack. This is the most insane. Oh my god. The best and worst hand chop it up. Aces and ace jack make the straight. The only person sent home is the person holding pocket queens. Ten players remain, and Machenzio, I guess that's how you pronounce that, on my left, just won't die. He gets it in completely dominated yet again with queen jack suited versus ace jack suited. He flops a flush draw, breaks the turn, and drills one of the two remaining queens to give him the win. He's been like a little Harry Houdini, escaping almost certain tournament death over and over but he doesn't do it here after getting it in on the turn with top two pair versus bottom set. Deuces hold, winning a pot of 1.8 million in chips. We're down to nine players and made the second final table of the trip. We're guaranteed a minimum of $1,364. Pay jumps get large though. We're third in chips, 18,000 up top. There are huge ICM implications. We don't wanna make any mistakes, especially early on. After players pick their seats, we're dealt ace queen offsuit in middle position. I'm in raise. The big blind's one of two players who can knock me out. He makes the call. Flop comes king seven deuce with two hearts. We have ace high and a backdoor straight draw. The opponent checks. I'm gonna have all the sets, aces and big kings in my range. I take a stab at it betting one third pot. That does the trick. The player folds. We win our first hand. Next I play a hand that I'm not too proud of. I have ace jack offsuit in the big blind. Under the gun min raises. Folds to me. I have a hand that's strong enough to defend with. I call. The flop comes ace 10 eight rainbow. We have top pair and some backdoor draws. I check. Seems like I'm in a good situation, but the problem is that the under the gun player is gonna have plenty of combinations with better aces, sets, or two pair hands. I don't think I'll be able to call three streets. Luckily, I don't have to because under the gun plays passively. Okay, that, that check back is great. So I'm gonna bet two streets.
The river is the four of clubs. This initially looks scary because the flush draw gets there. I don't think that I have to worry about it too much because under the gun should have had all types of hands on the flop with draws and backdoor draws since theoretically an ace high flop containing another Broadway card should be much better for his range than it is for my big blind defending range. The fact that he didn't makes me think that he has a second pair type hand with some showdown value. For that reason, I should bet an amount that can get called by something like King 10. That would be a small amount. In the moment, I get a little too excited and fire for three fourths pot. Thought it may look like I'm bluffing with a hand like a busted straight draw. Perhaps I can get called light from a non-believer that has kings, queens, jacks, or a 10. The opponent folds without thinking for too long. Or sizing doesn't accomplish much since better hands are always calling. The worst hands are pretty much always folding given the circumstances. One of the short sacks busts. We're down to eight and guaranteed 1,900 when we pick up pocket fives in the hijack. I'm in raise, cut off folds. The button shoves it in my stupid face. The blinds fold, it's back on me. Very best case scenario, I'm flipping. Worst case scenario, I'm completely crushed. There's no need to risk half my stack at the moment, especially not until some of these other smaller stacks get knocked out. I make some more pay jumps. I let it go. The flop is no good for us anyway. I doubt the button. Would have made a move like that as a bluff with two smaller stacks still in. Fun break here. Eight people left. I'm in third. And feeling pretty nervous, pretty excited. Uh, this is the second final table on the trip. It's really tough to make. And... Uh, last last time I got seventh or something, so don't want that to happen again. Want to hopefully make some pay jumps, ladder up a little bit, run good, and take down that first place prize of seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars. We come back from the break and look down at Ace King offsuit. Another short sack is busted, so we're guaranteed twenty six hundred under the gun plus one raises. He's first in chips. Cool raise, dude. I'm making it more. I three bet to two hundred forty thousand. I prefer to win this without seeing a flop. Under the gun plus one, doesn't want to dance, he folds, we win it, I'm happy about that. The following hand, we have ace jack suited, Skull Island raises again from early position, you should have a narrow opening range, I don't want a three bet again, I flat, small blind also flats, so we go three ways to the flop, comes jack 10 nine rainbow, we have top pair top kicker with some backdoor draws. The players check to me, I'm in an interesting spot, it's a very connected board that any of us in the hand could have smashed based on how it was played pre-flop. There aren't too many great turns for me, so I take a stab at it betting half pot to deny equity. I'd love to win this pot right now. Small blind doesn't like that plan. Yeah, we're just gonna have to fold this, I think. I don't think we can call it here. Small blind jams over my bet with the under the gun player still in, and one very small stack still at the table with two others that have around the same amount of chips as the small blind. Could easily have king queen for the straight, all the sets, some two pair combinations. Small blind should never be jamming here as a bluff. I'm essentially at the bottom of my value betting range. I don't need to call here and risk the majority of my chips, but I could be drawing slim or near dead. Calling the small blind, just ripping for a pile here. Oh, bad run out for me anyway. Later it folds to me in the small blind at queen seven offsuit. The big blind only has nine bigs in his stack. I wish he had slightly less, or I had a slightly better hand. I'm at the very bottom of my range that I feel comfortable shipping it in with nine big blinds effective. All right, we're ripping this. What is it? Queen seven offsuit. Well, there she is. All right. That was a little scary. We do get it through to add some chips to our stack and deplete the short stack even more. In this hand, we're dealt Jack-10 suited under the gun. I'm in raise, folds to the button. He has the most chips at the table, and he three bets. Near the bottom of my under the gun opening range, there's no need to take the risk of playing a big pot out of position against someone who has me covered and is very likely strong. I fold. It's always fun to see what the flop would have been. Could have been interesting. We would have had bottom pair with a gutter and a backdoor flush draw. The very next hand, we have H-Jack offsuit in the big blind. The hijack raises. I defend. We're heads up. The flop comes 7-5-4 rainbow. We completely miss it. I checked the pre-flop aggressor. It's not a good flop for his range compared to mine, so. I expect this to get checked back a lot. Surprisingly, that's not what happens. Who's gonna check raises? Got some backdoor. Yes. This play may seem a little reckless, but the hijack might be seed betting with this entire range. I can have all the sets. I can have 6-3 suited for the straight. I can have 8-6 suited and 8-6 offsuit. I can have all the two pair combos as well. I also have some good card removal, so it's less likely that I'm up against a hand like aces or jacks. Plus, if I get called by a hand like pocket eights or nines or tens, I still have six outs. Not long after, we're dealt ace king suited in the small blind. The cutoff opens. Jamming seems reasonable. I may be able to accomplish the same goal by three betting to a smaller amount though. I make it about four times the initial raise. Everyone folds. That's a good outcome. 
two players get knocked out in a short time frame. Now we're guaranteed a minimum prize of 4,900. We're in fourth place out of five, and we have ace jack off suit in the cutoff. I'm in raise, folds to the big blind, he defends, we're heads up, battling Skull Island again. The flop comes a 6 5 with two hearts, we have top pair, good kicker, and a backdoor flush draw. The big blind checks, I'm probably way ahead, I check back for deception, pot control, and perhaps induce a bluff from my opponent on the turn. The 10 diamonds comes out, the opponent fires for about 3 fourths pot. Maybe the big blind has a huge hand, maybe my check back on the flop works to induce a bluff. I call. The river is the jack of spades. We have top two pair and a big pot with five left at the final table. The big blind slows down and checks. There's a good chance he has nothing, but maybe he has a hand that can call a decent sized bet. Consider a half pot sized bet initially, and ultimately settle on three fourths pot sizing. The big blind could have a number of hands that he might be able to call a bet with, including ace 10, ace 6, ace 5, 10 6, and 10 5 suited. And he might even think that any ace could be good after I check back on the flop. He ends up folding immediately, so I doubt he had much. He may not have even had a pair. Another player gets knocked out. There are only four of us left. We're guaranteed at least $6,778. I've got about the same amount of chips as the player on my left. The other two opponents have much larger stacks. I need to run good to catch up. Now that we've made some pay jumps, I have less to lose and much more to gain by making some moves to hopefully chip up. I have ace-10 offsuit in this hand. The button is raised. Four-handed, ace-10 offsuit is very strong. Flighting and playing out of position doesn't seem ideal, but three betting and potentially playing for it all is scary as well. Used fire. Nope, pretty bad net. Big blind folds, the button calls, this is a huge moment, we're heads up, the flop comes queen eight seven with two hearts, the pot is nearly as big as our entire stack, we only have ace high, what a nightmare. If there were any stacks shorter than mine, I'd consider checking or giving up, since I'm the shortest and I have some backdoor draws to the nuts, I'd go a different route. Good luck us. Fold, nice. We had nothing there. Big move. Yeah. That's what we do. We do big moves. We win a key hand that separates us quite a bit from the smallest stack at the table, then raise a queen 10 offsuit on the button. Big blind defends for heads up. Queen 10. Nice. We're just going to check this back. Good, safe turn. Good river. He's gonna bet big here. He's gonna rough queens, but he doesn't have them. Cause it's not gonna look like I'm ever gonna have a queen. Oh, oh shit, wow. but he has one. That's a giant cooler for a uh, final table. The check back on the flop might've saved our tournament life. We're still breathing, but we have some work to do to get first. Dealt ace nine suited in the big blind, folds to the small blind, he raised it up. I imagine that I've got the best hand, I'm not gonna call, give my opponent the opportunity to outflop me. I'm gonna three that rip. Fold right away. We are being pretty aggressive here. As the blinds increase, the player on our left's chip stack increases as well. Now he's in second place, and I'm in last by quite a bit. Skull Island opens on the button. My initial thought is to jam for a little more than 20 big blinds. Instead, I pull back and I just fly out with pocket threes. We're heads up. The flop comes out. We don't make a set. I check. My plan is to give up on this. Then the button checks back. With my stack size, every hand is extremely important. Maybe I can steal this one with a small bet. I take a stab for one third the size of the pot and immediately get called. Not what I was hoping for. All right, we're done with this one. We tried. We were just kidding. Just kidding. I have like ace We don't win, but at least we didn't jam pre-flop because we very likely would have gotten called and would have been knocked out. At this point, I only have about 18 and a half big blinds. I have half the chips the third place player has and 8-6 suited. Small blind raises it up. Folding is too weak. I call in position. The flop comes jack six deuce rainbow. We have middle pair and about 15 big blinds left. The opponent leads for one third pot. Could be doing this with this entire range, including lots of high card hands. After all, it's tough to make a pair. If I call, I'm going to have just over a pot size bet left in my stack. I'm not going to like almost any turn cards. There's no way I can fold at the moment. Denying equity from hands I'm beating is important. If I'm currently behind, I should have five outs twice. Given these factors, without much to lose, jamming's the best option. Snap. It's not good. Top set. 
Nice end. GG. Good game, man. Good run. Thank you. Well, not a lot of drama in that final hand. We happened to run into the nuts four-handed. We're drawing essentially dead. Chickadees aren't that hard to play sometimes, it turns out. In a field of almost 1,000 players, we get the fourth best possible outcome, turning our $125 buy-in to $6,778, over 54 times the initial investment. Fun run, didn't quite get gold, but happy with how I played. Uh, Golden Knights won, you can see on the TV here, so that's good news in the playoffs. And uh, seven, seven K is pretty good for a day's work. Hadn't really been Running too well, hadn't really been playing too well, but definitely got lucky today. So uh, happy overall. What about you? what do you think, Andrew? I'm happy overall as well. Very happy. Nice. Time to celebrate the second largest cash up to this point on the trip. Andrew and I go to my favorite spot in town called Cabo Cantina. They have poker on the TV at the bar before we even get there. This place is made for us. The drinks and food are absolutely delicious as well. It's been a good day. You can already hear the Eric Seidel's and the Phil Ivey's in the comments section saying that I punted, but I didn't punt, man. It's a tricky spot. I did not punt. That's it for this one, dudes. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Helps out the channel a lot. If you're interested in joining GG Poker for some cash games or for a tournament like the one you just saw, be sure to use the Mugs promo code. That'll get you $60 in extra bonus tickets if you deposit $20 or more. So definitely take advantage of that. The next episode is gonna be awesome. It's from the 5K main event. It's the second largest tournament buy-in that I've ever played. And uh, we made the money. I got my biggest score ever. If you wanna kind of spoil it for yourself, I guess, and see how I did, check out my Handed Mob. I'll have a link down below in the description box. You can see not only how I did for that event, but how I did for the entire WSOP. I got nine caches. Um, by far the most I've ever had before. I went 0 for 8 last year, so uh, it was an awesome WSOP for me. And um, I wasn't able to make videos, you know, for, for each one of those tournaments, but um, I have made videos for pretty much all the exciting ones uh, with, with the main event still coming out. Uh, last thing on the list, I'm going out to the Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida, October 23rd through the 26th. I'll be playing in some cash games out there, and I'll also be firing in this $1,100 tournament. So if you're in the area and you want to come out and uh, <clears throat> say hi, feel free to do that. It's not a meetup game. Uh, it'll just be me out there, and um, should be pretty awesome, man. I'm excited. First time I'll, I'll have visited that property, so I've been wanting to go there for a long time, and I'm pretty pumped up about it. Hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.